A diplomatic squabble between Benin and Niger appears to have ended, at least for now. This after Benin decided Wednesday to allow crude oil from Niger to ship through ports in Benin. Reuters reported Wednesday that Benin blocked exports from landlocked Niger and demanded the country reopen its border to goods from Benin. Senegalese political analyst Ibrahim Khan tells me both countries are in violation of economic community of West African states ECOWAS's products. When uh, ECOWAS decided to lift the sanctions against Niger, Niger accepted to reopen its borders with uh, Nigeria but refused to reopen his border with uh, Benin. And we all know that the port of Cotonou, part of his activities is related to the transportation of goods from uh, the port to Niger. So the fact that Niger refused to reopen his border with uh, Benin was a kind of sanction against Niger in the sense that uh, they didn't want Niger to continue to have activities in his port. So now that they decided to start using Benin for the the exportation of their oil, Benin also remember that a few weeks before, Niger refused to give them that possibility of exporting to Niger so that they are retaliating. And the president of uh, Benin in an interview made it clear that it was a kind of retaliation. So who does this uh, seek to benefit the most and uh, wouldn't any further action violate ECOWAS protocols? Yeah, all of them is, are in violation of ECOWAS protocol. As soon as the sanction was lifted against Niger, Niger was really supposed to reopen his border and to accept goods coming from the port of Cotonou. Benin also signed agreement to allow Niger to export its oil through its own territory. That uh, contract needs also to be respected. But here, the problem is uh, Benin needs money from uh, the transportation of goods to Niger. Niger needs money for selling its oil. So I think uh, the only option that they have is to reach an agreement for each of them getting a kind of uh, benefit so, as you said, ECOWAS lifted sanctions against Niger because of the overthrow of President Bazoum. What did ECOWAS get back in return after lifting the sanctions against Niger? So far, nothing. And I think the lifting of the sanction was just a kind of uh, push for Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali to reconsider their decision of uh, leaving the organization. So I think for that one, it's another cycle of conversation and discussion. You heard that the the new Senegalese prime minister has decided to organize a tour in the three countries to discuss with the leaders so that they can reconsider coming back to ECOWAS. And I know there are many other actors who are trying also to do their best to convince the, the leader of the three countries. Democratic Republic of Congo President Felix Tshisekedi has kick-started a constitutional review process saying he wants a dignified constitution. The recently elected head of state announced his intention to set up a commission to reflect on a new constitution, urging that the Congolese law put in place in 2006 was a post-conflict law. President Tshisekedi explained, among other things, about the slowness in setting up political institutions, such as the Bureau of the National Assembly and the government. The institutions are still not in place more than five months after the 2023 elections, which gave him a second and final term of office, ending in 2028. Although he announced this while on European European tour at the beginning of May, it has become a serious concern among the opposition and civil society. When asked by Congolese in Belgium about a possible revision of the constitution, he replied that we need a constitution worth of our country. Some opponents already fear that he could set his term count back to zero, seeking a flesh mandate under the new supreme law if amended. Christian Mwando, who heads the opposition parliamentary group in the National Assembly, said the announcement is an attempt at a third term. He said, we cannot accept it. 
it's a total lack of leadership. President Tshisekedi must take the, his responsibilities for the republic and not always put the blame on others or the texts. The texts are clear and are good. With a slan, slalinist majority, he could have put the country in order, but he did not. He has no right to blame anyone, not even the constitution. Tshisekedi should read the constitution carefully and understand that the installation of the prime minister and government can in no way be blocked by the law, especially in the current context of a single political bloc with a majority at all legislative levels and a corrupt electoral commission, contrary to what he claims, said Devos Kitoko. In a statement, Fayuru's party said Tshisekedi's maneuvers are aimed at illegitimately maintaining himself in power, which he obtained by an electoral holdup in 2018 and by a charm of elections in 2023. He is also concealing his inability to perceive the territorial integrity of the DRC in the face of the 20 M23 rebels. Much of French-speaking Africa has seen the debate about changing their constitutions and extending the terms of office of heads of state. Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, the Central African Republic, and Guinea have not escaped this debate.